uh, very much, uh, Cynthia. And uh, David, thanks again for offering to speak to our group tonight. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about David. Uh, he was born and raised here in Dutchess County. He buys and sells postcards. Uh, the hunt for rare postcards has taken him to every corner of the United States. He's 35, now probably 36 maybe, and he has amassed uh, almost 5,000 views of Dutchess County and the Hudson Valley. He's still buying and selling postcards and phot photographs on eBay, and he runs a Facebook page uh, titled Hudson Valley Revisited. That's Hudson Valley Revisited. He uh, loves to travel both in the United States and abroad. His last trip uh, that he took, it, it took him over to Russia, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, and he's hoping that after the pandemic, he can travel again. Dave, I wanna thank you for sharing your collection with us and so everybody, uh, let's sit back and enjoy and listen to about the, some of the forgotten hamlets in Northern Dutchess County. Okay, David, go ahead. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, I hope you learned something new about Dutchess County and um, find something else to appreciate about our county that we live in. Um, I'm gonna start the presentation now. We have a lot to get through. I'll share my screen. All right, hopefully everyone can see this. So Forgotten Hamlets of Northern Dutchess County. You know, I might want to change the name going forward as, you know, a lot of these places aren't forgotten. They're just smaller than they were. Maybe I should have rural nor uh, Northern Dutchess County, but that doesn't roll off the tongue very well. Let's see. All right, these are the towns of Dutchess County. Um, so you have the town of Rhinebeck, but then you'll also have the village of Rhinebeck, the town of Red Hook, village of Red Hook. Uh, this is just the political delineation of our county. So we're going to be talking about the northern part of the county. So north of Poughkeepsie, LaGrange, and Dover, um, looking at Millerton area, Menia, of course, uh, Pleasant Valley, Clinton, and the hamlets around Rhinebeck. So these are the list of the towns in Dutchess County. And these are the large cities, villages, and larger hamlets. Uh, so you have Tivoli, Red Hook, Hyde Park, Pleasant Valley. And I'm not really gonna be touching too, many, too much on these larger areas. I really wanna focus on uh, the crossroads and the small hamlets that were around uh, uh, the countryside of Dutchess County. So a lot of these are gonna be through vintage postcards. This is a beautiful vintage postcard here, hand-drawn by the sender, which is a very rare to find. He's sitting on Slide Mountain in the Catskills, looking at the Hudson River and Rhinebeck in the distance. Uh, just really nicely well-drawn. Uh, the postcard craze was from between 1906 to 1914. Stopped around 1914 due to a lot of the postcards were printed and produced in Germany. So when World War I broke out, um, they weren't printing postcards for the United States market. So in more inferior uh, postcards were printed, usually using those old uh, images printed on inferior paper and the craze kind of died out. But in 1908, to the height of the postcard craze, over 1 billion postcards were sent through the mail, which is just an enormous amount uh, from every little hamlet, every little town all over the world to not just the United States, but all over the world, China, Russia, Australia, Europe, uh, the craze was everywhere. It also correlated with the rise in family vacations, which was very important for an area like Dutchess County, which had our beautiful lakes and mountains, uh, pasture lands and everything like that. It was a very bucolic area. So very popular for people coming up from the city, getting fresh air up here in Dutchess County. Uh, Detractor says that it, it, it ended the age of polite correspondence, which is something that is said over the years, of course, texting and that is brought away of writing a letter now. So the same sort of thing that has uh, continued through history. So let's get into um, the images of Dutchess County. We're gonna be starting up here in the northern part of the county, Pine Plains. 
this is the north central area. And we're gonna be talking about Pulver's Corners, which is in the uh, eastern more part of the town and Mount Ross, which is right up here in the northwest area, right on the border of Dutchess County and Columbia County. So here's a view of Pulver's Corners. This is Clayton Pulver's uh, house and him on the wagon, I believe over here. This is uh, something to plow up the field. So you can see all the piles of uh, wood that is being stored for winter that's up, up and coming. But uh, what I really want to uh, people to focus on is also to look at the background of these images. If you look on the left here, you just see these open wide spaces, the rock walls that delineate the different fields that uh, Dutchess County was so much more rural, but it was also cleared that it wasn't all of these forests that we see today. Uh, Dutchess County is much more forested than it was you know, 100, 200 years ago. So something to keep an eye on well in the background. This is the hamlet of Mount Ross. Almost nothing of this hamlet exists today. It was a mill, a place uh, right on the creek. Use, uh, you can see the mills over here, uh, most likely milling grain or uh, wood shops. Uh, you can see the post office and hotel just beyond it. It's a long building right here. And of course, the railroad station, which was really the lifeblood of this little hamlet. Allowed, people, allowed grain to go towards the Hudson River at Rhinecliff. This was the Huckleberry Line. Um, as some parts, the grade was so steep that the train would go so slowly, people were able to disembark the train, pick huckleberries along the side, and by the time got back up to the top of the hill, get back on the train and continue on. Uh, just an interesting little story of this uh, small railroad line in Northern Dutchess County. Here's a different angle looking from the railroad station here in the foreground. You can see a close up of these mills along the creek here. A lot of the uh, refuse over here from the sawmill, the wood all stacked up uh, in piles. Uh, just nice to see these uh, images of these small hamlets, seeing the colonial houses and the old barns that are, you know, long gone. But even by this time, you can see this old barn is uh, feeling the weight of gravity on it. Um, but again, all of this no longer exists. Mount Ross uh, is really just a crossroads today. Here's a close up of the Van Tassel uh, store and post office. This is actually sent down uh, from someone that stayed there at the hotel saying, can you accommodate myself, my wife and baby, I believe my sister also one week beginning September 14th. So this is someone that stayed here before, got this postcard, sent it back up to say, can you please reserve one of these rooms upstairs, uh, maybe for a vacation or to visit family in the area. This was also the post office at the time. So of course, you have to go out and deliver the mail every day. So you can see the horse-drawn sled that he's standing on here, and another sled over here, perfect for the snow. Another view of Mount Ross taken from the top of the hill. So here again, you can see all the mills. Oops, a little too fast. The mills over here in the background, the bridge over the creek, the railroad station would be down here on the bottom left and the old schoolhouse. Now this is the only schoolhouse, the only building that really stands of uh, Mount Ross and is actually at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds today. It's the old schoolhouse. You can go inside and there's many items donated uh, to show what school life was like at the turn of the century. It's very interesting but uh, the Mount Ross School still stands at the fairgrounds. Moving on to the town of Northeast. Northeast is up here, of course, in the Northeast corner, has a little uh, chimney on it as well. And we're gonna be talking about uh, the hamlets of Chicamico, which would be down here, uh, and Sharon Station, which is right down here in the bottom part, bottom east or southeast corner of the town. Here's a view of Chicamico. Of course, it was on the CNE or the Central New England line that went up right the middle of uh, Dutchess County. This wasn't a passenger station. This was actually a freight station. So uh, this is where you would bring your milk or corn or wheat, whatever you were growing, and it could be put onto a train, brought down to the city uh, or into uh, Poughkeepsie to uh, be sold off. But you can see the sign right here, Chicamico, tiny little hamlet today. There was a general store as well, but I haven't found a postcard of that. Here's a view of Sharon Station. Uh, Sharon Station uh, was at one point part of uh, Connecticut, but is now part of uh, New York after a land, uh, land swap that we'll be talking about soon. 
Uh, so this was the main railroad station for Sharon, Connecticut on the other side of the border. Uh, it was part of the Harlem line. You can see the train here coming up from the city. Uh, beautiful building. It's another view of it looking down the tracks, looking south. This is the Sharon Station Hotel. If you have a station, it's good to have a hotel next door in case you're not going to make it into town in time. You can stay at a hotel right next door. And these two buildings still exist today. This is the Sharon Station. Uh, today it's a private home. On the other side of these uh, trees here is actually the rail trail for the Harlem Line. And the Sharon Station Hotel also still stands. It's also a private residence recently for sale. So if you want the old Sharon Station Hotel, um, it might be available. Okay, moving on to the town of Aminia. Aminia is right here on the eastern portion, right along the border of Connecticut. We're gonna be talking about the hamlets of Aminia Union, Smithfield, and Wasaic. Now, before I talk about Aminia, I really should talk about the Oblong. Now, the Oblong was a trade that we did with Connecticut uh, to uh, solidify our boundaries. So if you go back into way into the 1600s, when the Dutch controlled Manhattan, uh, and most of the Hudson River, the Dutch really didn't have a religious um, aspect to their colony. They were just mostly about making money, buying beaver pelts, trading with the Indians, and bringing it back to Europe and profiting. While the other colonies like Massachusetts and Rhode Island had a more religious aspect to their claim. And um, the border between the two states of Connecticut and New York went back and forth at one point, Connecticut claimed all the land all the way to the Delaware River, while the, well, New York at one point claimed land all the way to the Connecticut River. So you can see that the border changed dramatically. And to solidify this border, in 1731, um, there was a deal done to give Connecticut the panhandle, which gave them places like Stamford, Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, Norwalk, in exchange for a two-mile boundary on the western end of Connecticut. And this was called the Oblong right here. So this became a new addition to um, New York State. And you can see the Oblong right here in Dutchess County, one right up the, oops, right up the eastern border. They gave us the chimney up in northeast, gave us a nice big piece of what is now Amenia. They gave us the hamlets of Mount Riga, Millerton, Amenia Union, Leedsville, Coleman Station, Sharon Station, Weebatuck, South Amenia, South Dover, and Quaker Hill. So a bunch of little hamlets that are now almost in limbo in between the two states. So this was known for um, outlaws being here because there wasn't really much enforcement of the law between Connecticut and New York. So a lot of people would hide out in this area as well. But it gave us some really nice, interesting uh, um, hamlets, including the Media Union. So here's a view of Oblong Valley looking north. You can see the old church in Amenia Union here on the bottom left. But again, just large pastures and open fields uh, throughout this um, valley here. And it's a very interesting place to go today, drive around as it really is almost like going back in time. Still very rural, very quiet. You'll be the only car on the road. Here's the Amenia Union store and post office. It's a very typical design for this era of uh, public buildings, of post offices. You can see the roof line here is uh, almost like a Greek revival uh, style roof. Uh, very uh, typical of early 1800s uh, buildings of the uh, area. This is a view of uh, down Main Street in Amenia Union. And what's interesting about Amenia Union is that half of it is in New York State. The other half is in Connecticut. So the person that sent this postcard actually made a line right down the middle here showing the half that's in New York and the half that's in Connecticut. And this is still true today, uh, right on the boundary of the two states. So the Oblong deal cut it right in half. Moving on to Smithfield. Smithfield is another tiny hamlet. Only the church really stands today of the area. Uh, but it was very famous in colonial era for uh, George Whitefield having preached at this church. Now, George Whitefield was, um, he was cross-eyed, so excuse the painting, uh, but he was a fantastic orator at the time, and he was an evangelical Anglican preacher, uh, studied at Oxford in England, and came over to uh, preach to mostly Dutch-German um, congregants um, 
about you know the Reformation and uh, the Reformed Church. Uh, he was very famous. He even spoke in front of uh, Benjamin Franklin, who uh, commented on his great uh, oral skills. Um, and this is one of his last preach was at Smithfield in New York. He actually died in October of 1770, giving the speech in Smithfield in June of 1770. So even in ill health that he still traveled the country uh, preaching. Moving on to Wasaic. Wasaic is a very interesting little hamlet uh, tucked away uh, just um, off of Route 22. This is the old Borden's Creamery building. This was the first Borden's plant ever built. And you'd be surprised to hear that the uh, eastern portion of Dutchess County was actually one of the best dairy producing areas in the 1800s. That a lot of the milk that was produced in eastern Dutchess County supported uh, the revolution, also sp uh, supported Civil War troops for the Union, uh, bringing uh, milk powder and dairy down to troops. So it's very, very important to have these uh, creameries and large creameries in the area to support that uh, demand down in the city and for the army. So this is the beautiful early uh, 1800s building here. Uh, brick still stands today uh, in Wasaic. This is the superintendent's house. You can say it's a very uh, East Lake type of Victorian building, all the ornamentation along the edges of the porch here. Uh, which must be, you know, unbelievable to paint all of these different colors that the roof was and everything as well. Uh, sadly, the house today is in very, very terrible shape. I don't want to show a picture of it. It still stands, but without all of this beautiful ornamentation. And hopefully somebody will come along and uh, save this building. This is a view down Main Street in Wasaic. Uh, this is today a restaurant with a very nice patio outside you can uh, visit. At the time it was the hotel. Uh, down the street over here you can see the post office at the end. Another early 1800s building and over here is the freight house for the railroad station. Now a lot of these photographs were taken uh, by one photographer named Ganung. He took a lot of the photographs in eastern Dutchess County in places like Dover Plains, Amenia, and Wasaic. And a lot of his photographs have his bicycle actually sitting uh, on a porch or along a tree or sitting on the ground, uh, which is very indicative of his photographs. I don't see one here, but uh, in some images you can actually see his bicycle. These are the charcoal pits that were in Wasaic. Now these uh, were used to uh, uh, supply the steel industry, the iron industry in the area. They made pig iron. So these were used to uh, bring down the sulfur content of the wood. Uh, and uh, reduce impurities in the pig iron. And these still stand today in the woods of Apollo Road. You can actually go into them today and look inside. The wood would be dropped in here. Of course, it's a big chimney, um, but it's interesting to see all the stonework that was used to build these things. Here's the railroad station in Wasaic, uh, again by photographer Ganung. It's most likely a person waiting for the train. You see one of some of the conductors and railroad men here standing by the door. Now the railroad was really important for a lot of these hamlets. Uh, without the railroad, you don't have that connection to the outside world to bring your goods, to have a, bring your things to market. So um, if you're connected to the railroad, that was really the highway at the time. This is one of the old houses in uh, Wasaic. This is something that I really like to collect are these uh, old colonial houses that are in Dutchess County. A lot of the wood ones no longer stand. Um, some of course do, you see them dotted around uh, some of the rural roads in Dutchess County, but uh, it was hard to maintain these unlike the brick buildings or the stone buildings. Uh, I'm not sure if this one still stands myself. I've gone through Was Wasaic and I haven't seen it. You can see the chimneys collapsing a little bit over here on the left, but it's just nice to see these rural farmhouses uh, in Dutchess County. Here's the largest tree in Dutchess County where at the time before it was cut down, and I guess it was the formerly largest tree in Dutchess County. Uh, you can see it compared to the horse in the foreground, just a really great photo uh, photograph by Ganung uh, to give it a uh, scale. Um, you can see the wisps of hair on the horse just blowing by, just a nice uh, day in the life scene. And here's the Wasaic Storm Post Office. You saw it in the, at the end of the street on Main Street. Uh, you can see all this, the items here for sale, the old um, 
lodge over here on the left. And this building still stands and still the post office today, although it has vinyl siding and it does not look the same as it did before with the beautiful uh, almost Greek revival of once again roof and the windows with shutters. It's a little bit uh, more stale today, but at least it's still the post office carrying on a tradition that's gone on for over a hundred years now. Okay, moving down to Stamford over here, almost uh, north central Dutchess County. Of course, uh, Stamfordville is right there in Bangle. We're we gonna be talking about the hamlets of Stissing and McIntyre. Here's McIntyre Mills, which was just outside of Pauling along the creek. Um, these had uh, small mills. I believe there was uh, apple cider um, mill here. There was also uh, sawmills along here. Small cottages were uh, marked to this area and the CE and Railroad built their trestle right over on top of it. So not one of the more desirable places to live anymore. McIntyre Mills kind of just faded away. This is Stissing. This is the Stissing View Farm, another early colonial house, farmhouse. Just note the beautiful rock wall with uh, uh, wooden fence posts. That was very typical of uh, the rural Dutchess County, the dirt roads going along. But again, no forest, all cleared land in the background, uh, usually for grazing animals, grazing cows. Of course, the dairy industry was very important in this area. Here's the store and post office in Stissing. So all these, a lot of these little tiny hamlets had their own post office, their own general store. Everything was much more insular uh, to your small community. Of course, people aren't traveling to Poughkeepsie to go shopping or anything like that. Everything is very local. Uh, note the Adrian's farm equipment sign on the side. Adrian's was of course a factory along the river in Poughkeepsie that made harvesting machines. And this is the remains of the store and post office in Sissing. It burned around 1909. Uh, here it says the ruins of uh, Arnold's store, which was Sissing, destroyed by fire. Now, when they said that which was Stissing, was this was the center of the community, of course. This is where you got your mail. This is where you got your food, where you got deliveries made. Uh, so a loss of the general store was really a big loss for a hamlet. Uh, also in the background, you can see the C&E line crossing through. Uh, some of the freight stations that were along the line. Moving on to the town of Washington, here in the central uh, Dutchess County, it's right where uh, Millbrook is. We're gonna be talking about Lithgow and Mabbitsville. So here's Lithgow, which is on Route 44 in between Millbrook and Amenia. Uh, this would be going up towards Tower Hill on the left. Uh, this was the general store that was right there. And this is just another typical area of a farming community of your general store. Uh, and of course, up on this hill are some of the largest estates in Dutchess County today, actors and uh, some of the wealthiest people own their mansions here today. So Lithgow is a very quiet place, a very, uh, you know, almost hidden. People really don't want it to be well known. Moving on to Mabbitsville, this is closer to Millbrook. Uh, close to where Little Rest Road is. So this would be looking from Little Rest Road across Route 44 uh, towards Mabbitsville Road. This is the old general store here. Uh, oops. You can see some of the uh, packages packed up here in the window, baskets and uh, cloth for sale. Most likely the store owner and his son. I believe this is the mail delivery man over here because you see him in a lot of photographs of Mabbitsville up and down the street. And uh, you can note the beautiful house next door with the circular window up by the roof. And this still stands today. It's still a general store deli today. Of course, it looks a little bit different, but still that old building. And the house next door also still stands. You can see the circular window again up here. So it looks a little bit different with the car dealership next door, but still the same uh, Mabbitsville. This is looking down Main Street in Mabbitsville. So this might be Little Rest Road over here on the right. Uh, you can see the old hotel here. So it was a pretty long drive to get from Connecticut all the way to the Hudson River. So a lot of these places would have hotels as a rest spot uh, for a long journey across Route 44. Uh, you can see again, here's that uh, horse and carriage was most likely the postman over here by the general store. And a lot of little colonial houses that were dotted the little uh, side street and of course, 
Route 44 is so wide today that they can't have these houses right hugging the road as close as they were. So a lot of them were torn down. Um, nobody really wanted to live right along a busy road like Route 44. So I don't think anything in this photograph still stands today. Okay, moving on to Milan over here in the north part of the county, right in between Red Hook and Pine Plains. And we're gonna be talking about Jackson Corners, which is up here in the northern parts, Lafayetteville, which should be whew, over here in the eastern part, and Rock City, which is right along the western part of the town. This is uh, looking at Jackson Corners. This is the old general store over here. You can see the family standing on uh, what is now Jackson Corners Road. I believe they're playing croquet in the middle of the street. Uh, it's a pretty quiet street today, so you can probably still play croquet on Jackson Corners Road. This is what it looks like today. I believe there was an addition built onto the building, uh, but this was the old general store for Jackson Corners. Here's the old schoolhouse that was on the hill. This is most likely the photographer's wife sitting on the rock in front of the school. And this is the Pleasant View uh, Inn or hotel that was in uh, uh, Jackson Corners. So this is a very rural area. It had nice streams and of course, uh, nice walks on the mountains and things like that. So it's a very peaceful place to spend a weekend or a week uh, to get out of the city. But just note again, the fields that are along this uh, ridge line over here, that a lot of these hills were even uh, cleared for pasture land. This is a view of Lafayetteville. Now Lafayetteville is on Route 199 in between, um, I guess you would say Red Hook and uh, Pine Plains. But if you get off of the Route 199 exit uh, on the Taconic and take a right going east, you go right through Lafayetteville. So here you have the old Lafayette House Hotel. This was the post office over here. And you had the general store on the other side of the street. Now, of course, one, Route 199 is again a very busy road. I believe that this building no longer stands and the house in the background over here no longer stands either. This card I actually got very recently. Uh, this was one of my newest acquisitions. Um, and I'm very happy to get a nice view of the entire little village here. So of course, here's the Lafayette house. Uh, early colonial uh, house here. I was used as a hotel, two-story uh, building. And a lot of these did not survive uh, time, you know, uh, they were very well built, but of course being built in the early 1800s, late 1700s, it's uh, hard to maintain these types of buildings. Here's another view of the Lafayette House. But this building actually still stands today. I believe it is apartments today, as are the buildings next door, which used to be the post office. So it still stands today, maybe not in the best of shape, but uh, it's cool to see some of one of these old colonial hotels still uh, still standing. I use another recent acquisition. I didn't even include it in the list before. This is Milan. This is the Milan uh, Christian Church. Uh, you can see it's a very basic looking church again with this uh, sort of uh, Greek revival um, roof again built in the early to mid 1800s. Now I'm not sure if this is the church that is on Route 199. Um, today it looks very similar, but the windows and doors are a little bit different on that one. So I had to do a little bit more research and find out exactly where this church was located. Moving on to Rock City. Now you might know Rock City as where there's a large fork in the road. One road goes off, off into Red Hook, the other one goes into Rhinebeck. Uh, that's Rock City right at that intersection. And this is Main Street Rock City which is now no longer the main road. The main road goes behind these buildings. But it's very interesting to see the two general stores. This is the Battenfield store on the left. You can see the little early car, uh, the barns, and there's another general store over here on the right. Wow. This is what it looks like today. The general stores are still here. You can see that the barns were torn down for Route 199 here. Or is this uh, the road that goes to Rhinebeck? Sorry, three, maybe something I forgot. And this is the Battenfield store, which also still stands. Here's the old sawmill in Rock City. This was actually an old colonial mill right on the creek here. 
And as you can see over the time, these colonial mills uh, started getting uh, less used and started to fall apart. Even by the time postcards were produced, you can see this mill is already collapsing. In Rock City, just like Rhinebeck and Red Hook was famous for the violet industry. Here's the inside of a violet house in Rock City. This is a nice uh, family portrait here of all the young kids and wives. And the man here lounging on a long board above the flowers, most likely how they uh, picked weeds or uh, cultivated the flowers. Just a very interesting uh, interior view of one of these greenhouses. Here's the Battenfield store that we saw in the uh, postcard before. This was the general store. This was actually a colonial building as well. The general store would have been down here on the first floor, most likely the top floor was for the family. And this building still stands today. It's also uh, apartments, as you can see from the electrical box. So a few different residences in this house, but again, another colonial building that still stands um, in one of these hamlets. And just to give you a flavor of the little tiny houses that were here in Rock City, all the houses seem very small in comparison today, um, but this is a nice little farmhouse here. Uh, you can see the garden here in the background. It's just very typical of these hamlets. Nice day bed here, or hammock day bed to lie on. Okay, moving on to the town of Red Hook, we're going to talk about Upper Red Hook, Annandale, Barrytown, and Cokertown. Here's Upper Red Hook. Postcards of Upper Red Hook aren't great, um, but there are some of the only images that I've been able to find of the area. This is actually the old hotel over here on the right. It's hard to see behind the, uh, the tree. It's a very rural area. Uh, today, uh, this is off of Route 9, uh, north of Red Hook. Uh, if you take a side road, it goes right through Upper Red Hook, and a lot of this hamlet actually still stands today. This is a view of the old post road looking south. Uh, this would have been Route 9, but of course Route 9 has now been moved over. Um, it no longer goes through the hamlet. This is the hotel at Upper Red Hook. This is actually, I found this maybe about two weeks ago now. I was very excited to find it because I actually know this building and it still stands today. Still beautiful old colonial hotel again, still has all of its charm, all the uh, ornamentation, Victorian ornamentation and the eyebrow windows. You can see the part of the porch here has been enclosed, but uh, still here, still in great shape. I believe it's a private residence today in Upper Red Hook. So just to show you the old picture, Looks almost the same, just no shutters. This is Annandale. This is an area around uh, Bard College, but this was a colonial uh, little hamlet on the Hudson River. This is a little view down Main Street. You can see some of the old hotel over here on the right. This is another view looking at Broadway in Annandale. Oops. Well, I guess it does not want me, okay. See some of the houses right here, right along the road. A lot of Annandale doesn't exist again. It's tough to have these hamlets that built porches right along the road. So once automobiles came in and needed more space, uh, there just wasn't room anymore to have some of these houses. Here's the entrance to Ward Manor, which is one of the estates on the Hudson River in Annandale. And this is now the entrance to Bart College. So this gatehouse still stands. This is the Ward Manor House, which is also still part of uh, Bard College today, it still stands. And uh, this is the Gate Lodge to Blythewood. Now these are a lot of these estates along the Hudson River, uh, all the way from Beacon, all the way up into Columbia County, just dotted the Hudson River. Uh, just way for these uh, wealthy people from New York City to escape to the fresh air of the Hudson Valley. This is a beautiful octagonal building of the gatehouse and the long tree line drive through their large meadows to their great estate. And this is Blythewood, the Zabriskie Mansion, large sprawling estate, uh, had beautiful views uh, above the Hudson River. And this building still stands too, it's again, part of Bard College. And uh, I believe they just got a $500 million grant or a low or some payment. So I think they'll have plenty of money to keep these beautiful mansions afloat. 
Moving on to Barrytown. Now, Barrytown was really the railroad station for Red Hook. Uh, also had very beautiful estates. Uh, since Red Hook was uh, not along the Hudson River, uh, it was more inland. This was the railroad station for uh, Red Hook along the Hudson River Railroad. So you can see the beautiful Victorian uh, station that has uh, since been torn down. And some of the estates that were here up in Barrytown as well. This is Messina, uh, which was a beautiful Victorian building before it burned. Uh, the widow Jane Aspinwall uh, wanted it to be rebuilt, but wanted it to be rebuilt so that it was fireproof. And when she came back from a trip from Europe, she saw her new mansion, this kind of stone, hulking building, dark, small windows. She was a little bit uh, upset, to say the least. Uh, but she continued to live and stay in the beautiful grounds. Uh, I believe this whole estate is for sale. It was uh, owned by the Catholic Church. There's actually in front of it today, there's a just giant 15-story building that housed uh, the monks. Uh, so the entire estate's for sale if you would like to almost own a hot hotel and mansion in the Hudson River. This is the Edgewater Mansion in Barrytown, and this still stands today. Beautiful with the Doric columns, very uh, Romanesque. Rokeby, which was uh, a relative of the Ash family. Beautiful uh, mansion. You can see this is all painted here uh, on the porches. And this still stands today. You can still see the paint uh, on the porch here, still in its original uh, condition, which is very interesting. Oops. We have uh, Sylvania, which still stands in Barrytown uh, as well. It's a private residence. I think they want to keep their privacy as I cannot find an updated photograph of it. Uh, but looking on Google Maps, it still stands today. This is the Oaks, uh, which was in Barrytown. Uh, more in the hamlet, didn't have a view of the Hudson River, but this estate still stands today. It was recently for sale, and uh, they have a beautiful barn out back. I would love to just live in this barn. This is the only view of Cokertown that I found. This is, again, that Huckleberry Railroad that went uh, through uh, from Rhinecliff into Red Hook and then over to Mount Ross. And this is Spring Lake there in Cokertown. Okay, moving into the town of Rhinebeck, we're talking about Wurttemberg, Eckert Hook, and Hillside. This is the Marquette's home in uh, Wurttemberg. Now, Wurttemberg is right off of 9G. The large church is there as well. Uh, that was really the center of the hamlet. And these were mostly farming uh, community, large estates. Um, and was also abutted a lot of the estates that were on the Hudson River. A lot of these Hudson River estates had large farming fields inland uh, from their uh, properties that stretched all the way over to 9G. This is the Acred Hook. This is the old schoolhouse that still stands today. Uh, just another beautiful view of these uh, early rock walls that were built uh, all over Dutchess County. You can see right here uh, along the early, early road here. Eckert Hook was a very small community, a uh, very rocky area. This is the more mountainous area just east of, uh, southeast of Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. This is the Eckert Hook boarding house, which I think still stands today. So you can take your uh, family up here, uh, rent a few rooms for a week and really get out and uh, enjoy the countryside. Another boys boarding house is another boarding house here in uh, Acred Hook. So you can sit on the lawn over here or enjoy their, um, I don't want to say rickety, but uh, natural style gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> this is Primrose Hill in Rhinebeck. Uh, this is another area that's very close to uh, Acred Hook. You can enter it from Route 9G. It uh, looks very similar to like this today, except for paved roads. And this is Hillside. Hillside was right along the Albany Post Road. This is the old Hillside Church. Uh, this one was for the large estates that uh, lined it, like Fox Hollow that was across, this, across the road in uh, Rhinebeck. 
Um, it was recently for sale. I believe somebody just purchased it and converted it into uh, uh, in a, in a home. Of course, you can see it's one big, large room inside. Moving into the yeah. town of Clinton, which I think everyone here has heard of. We're gonna be talking about Bull's Head, uh, Clinton Hollow, Frost Mills, Pleasant Plains, Hibernia, uh, Blooming Grove, and Schultzville. So this is the store and post office in Bull's Head. Uh, you might know it from Bull's Head Road uh, that crosses the Taconic. Now this is right off of uh, Bull's Head Road. Uh, you can see the, all the items that are for sale on the porch. Here's an early auto. That was most likely the photographers over here on the right. You see this card a lot in uh, um, postcard views. You can see the boy with his little horse over here tying it to the post. And this building still stands today. It's now a private residence off of Bull's Head Road. Uh, cool to see this early uh, general store still stands. Here's Hibernia. This is the country store in Hibernia. And uh, the person wrote who sent the postcard says, doesn't this look country? Uh, yes, it very much does, very rural. Uh, but you can see again, this Greek revival style uh, roof, uh, very indicative of the 18, early 1800s up to the 1840s. Um, a lot of buildings still look like this in the Hibernia area, but I do not believe the general store still stands. Here's Clinton Hollow. This is the blacksmith shop and dam. I believe this is the blacksmith shop over here. You can see an old mill over here on the left, maybe a Wainwright with the guy at the carriage. And of course the dam right over here. Here, this is a horse trough uh, for a horse to grab a drink before probably going up the steep hill um, towards Clinton uh, Corners. Here's a view up Main Street in uh, Clinton Hollow. So this will be looking from the creek um, going northwest, I believe. You can see the general stores up here on the, uh, in the center of the photograph. And I just like this guy leaning against this tree over here on the left. You're seeing it's a black man. But um, this actually looks very similar today. You can see the house still stands on either side of the road. And driving up, you can see the old general store up, uh, up the street. Here's the old burger store at Clinton Hollow. He also ran the store out of uh, Pleasant Plains. Uh, you can see it's an old colonial building added onto at some point over here on the left. And then the, the barn area was added on as well. So they probably lived in the part over here on the right. Um, this upstairs was probably storerooms. Of course, the general store here on the bottom. Now this building does still stand today, but it is sadly in very, very bad shape. Uh, I'm gonna warn you before I show you this image. It's all been vinyl covered. Um, everything has been closed up here in the old barn. Uh, I believe some of it is apartments today, it used to be a deli. But if somebody wants to come through and uh, restore this building, it would look uh, be a great restaurant or uh, restaurant hotel today. Moving on to Frost Mills. Uh, a lot of people thought it was called Frost Mills because of the large standpipe that would freeze every winter in a waterfall of ice but it was actually the person that owned the mill uh, initially was last name was Frost. As you can see the old mill over here, water powered, of course. Here's a view of the front of the mill, Dutch style mill where you can pull up uh, the large uh, pulley system and the ceiling would bring it up to the top floor. Frame would be milled and be processed as it went down and then put into bags where you could pick it up on the side of this uh, mill here. Now, Franklin Delano Roosevelt understood the value of this colonial mill and being one of the last ones in Dutchess County. So he really fought to uh, restore and uh, preserve this building. He even con uh, convinced the owner of IBM who ran IBM in Poughkeepsie uh, to put up some funds to protect this um, mill when he was governor and president. And of course they put up the funds and uh, ensured that it was protected until he died. And then they said, well, let's not fund this project and the mill was eventually torn down. Oh. Roosevelt saw the, the importance of keeping these colonial buildings for the history of uh, the area, but at least we have the photographs uh, to show what it did look like. One of the earliest mills in Dutchess County. Here's the burger store again. 
This is the other one was in Clinton Hollow. This one's in Pleasant Plains or Frost Mills. Now the area on the lower part was uh, Frost Mills. On the top of the hill was Pleasant Plains. The entire area is pretty much known as Pleasant Plains today. So you can see the general stores over here. This is a circus poster, most likely for something in Poughkeepsie in the, in the garage here. And the upstairs was most likely for the family residence. And this building almost is unchanged today. You can yeah. see that the barns are still here. This would be where the general store was. And of course the upstairs is where everyone lived. Now, uh, even since this photograph was taken, the house has been uh, beautifully restored um, and even looks better than it does here. So it's nice to see that uh, somebody's taking care of one of these old houses in Dutchess County. This is the Pleasant Plains uh, Church. Uh, again, a very uh, Greek style with the columns and uh, triangular roof. And this still stands today, right in the center of Pleasant Plains. Some things never change. Moving on to Schultzville, another tiny hamlet here in Dutchess County. This is the general store. Uh, you can see over here was most likely the owner's house. Uh, this is the MJ Sweet store in uh, Schultzville. It's still a general store today, the Schultzville general store. The house has been torn down next door, uh, but I believe somebody new has just uh, opened a restaurant in here again. So it's still uh, open, a great place to stop if you're driving around the back roads of uh, Dutchess County. Here's the general store on our left, looking up the street. Oops. You can see the schoolhouse all the way up the road over here. This was most likely a blacksmith shop. You can see the carts over here. Maybe it was even a Wainwright who uh, made wagon wheels. And here's the Christian church in Schultzville. So these churches were really the lifeblood of these hamlets. It's where everyone went on Sunday, where everyone could catch up with the uh, everyone that's spread around this large area that was around these hamlets, um, focal point of the community. And the church still stands today, much in the same condition. Here's the old mills of Schultzville that were along the creek. Uh, as you can see that they're in pretty terrible shape here. Uh, by the time these postcards were produced in 1900 to 1910, it was really the end of the era for these colonial mills um, they weren't big enough for, uh, you know, mass production that would have been needed. A lot of the people that would have worked in these mills have already left. They've tried to find work in uh, places like Peak and Poughkeepsie, um, larger towns and cities where they could uh, have larger factories and uh, uh, produce more than these small mills. So you can see the one across the creek here is already uh, falling apart here. There's holes in the wall. The window's already broken. And the one in the foreground looks like it might have burned at some point. So really the end of an era for these colonial mills in Dutchess County was the turn of the 20th century here. But it's also a rare thing to find in postcards is who would wanna usually wanna show the best parts of your hamlet, the store and the church. And uh, you really don't wanna show the ruins of everything of what's falling apart in town. So it's actually very special to find the uh, postcards of ruins. Okay, moving over to the town of Hyde Park, which I'm only gonna be talking about East Park, which is where here it says Crumb Elbow Post Office. So here's a view of 9G here in uh, East Park. You can see the big open fields uh, that were very indicative of this rural Dutchess County, uh, the creek, and of course the road that's being reinforced constantly with rocks and uh, wood pilings. As you can see, the creek probably floods and washes it all away. So you have to put another big pile of rocks to secure the road. Here's the Hyde Park track. This is a great view. It's hard to tell what the weather is like as uh, a lot of the women are wearing full skirts, but the men are seem to be in uh, their uh, white shirts. You see someone here that their shirts rolled up, so it might be a hot day. Of course, the guy next to him is in a big jacket. Uh, very interesting, you can see the finish line right here in white. And of course the guy with the camera is ready to take that photo finish. So this track was uh, located right on the corner of Route 9G and uh, Crum Elbow Road in East Park. Here's the East Park Square and store. This is Crum Elbow Road over here on the right. 
Uh, today, this is a Rite Aid where the general store is. You can see again, this Dutch style uh, uh, cantilever uh, pulley system to bring things upstairs to the storeroom. A uh, general store would have been down here and the family's house would have been over here on the left. Of course, their barns and their big uh, farming fields would be behind them. So this was the center of East Park today. Of course, later on, uh, became famous for uh, the Valkyll Cottage, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt's getaway house. So here's a view of it in the 1940s. And another side view of it showing the pool uh, in screened in porch. Maybe that's even Eleanor sitting in the screened in porch here, but uh, a nice pool over here might be have too many leaves in it. She has needs to have someone come by and skim the top. Okay, moving down to the town of Pleasant Valley. This is gonna be our last uh, town for the night. We're talking about Bloomvale, Salt Point, and Washington Hollow. Here's the Washington Hollow Inn in Washington Hollow. Of course, uh, it had its own bar and restaurant inside as well. A great stopping point on Route 44 between Connecticut and uh, Poughkeepsie. Now, Washington Hollow became famous during the Revolutionary War. Uh, this is a, a Tory town or a loyalist town to the crown and uh, Patriot troops uh, hiking over to get to Sharon, Connecticut, actually stopped here and found the Tories staying in the old Methodist church. And um, I'm not sure if there was a, a battle or a fight, but they were able to reclaim the town in the name of George Washington and the Continental troops. So we had our own little revolutionary battle here in uh, Dutchess County. But it later became famous for uh, having the fairgrounds. This is where the Troop K headquarters is today, uh, close to Route uh, 44 and Route 82. Here you can see the agricultural hall, whoops, in the background, circular building. Here we had uh, one of the other um, halls uh, would be where the Grange Hall would be. Of course, the grandstands and our track. You can see here a guy in a sulky uh, horse racing contraption. And of course the judges stand. Here's a close-up of the Agricultural Hall. It's a very early building. It was uh, almost a uh, landmark here in Dutchess County. Of course, that's where the fairgrounds were uh, before they were moved up to uh, Poughkeepsie and then up into Rhinebeck. Beautiful building, too bad it still, it doesn't stand. Here's just another view of um, the fairgrounds. Of course, you can see the Agricultural Hall and the Exhibition Hall over here on the right, the grandstand, most likely taken from the track. Here's the Bloomingdale Bridge, sometimes called Blooming Vale or Bloom Grove or Bloom Mills. A lot of different names for this area. Uh, this is on Route 82, very close to Clinton Corners. I believe uh, Clinton Corners Road comes out close to here. Uh, the Bloomingdale Falls is over here. So this is actually an interesting card showing the ruins of the old mill uh, that was along the creek. Uh, this is another area where um, Continental troops uh, passed through on their way up to Sharon, Connecticut after their battle at Washington Hollow. They encamped right along uh, the road here by this mill. Okay, moving on to Salt Point, here's the old post office. You can see the rural uh, free delivery carriers. Um, one would be for most likely inside the hamlet and a lot of these, this guy would have gone into the countryside delivering mail to all the small houses uh, dotted around the landscape there. This is a job I think I would have enjoyed at the time, just uh, taking my time um, riding around rural Dutchess County. I guess I can do that still today. Building still stands today. Here's another view that I just got uh, two weeks ago. A uh, great view of the post office and general store. It's always exciting to find a, a new post office view. So before moving down to the end of the street from the previous one, this was the old post office in uh, Salt Point. It's a very interesting style building, uh, most likely changed over time. Uh, today, this is where there's a little strip mall and the post office is in there today. So this has been torn down. You can see looking down the creek here to the Little Wappingers Creek. And you can see the mill building right here that was on the island in between the two creeks. Here's the railroad station in Salt Point. 
This would have been the passenger station. This is the freight station for goods going to market. And this is the creamery, which is always important to have in your hamlet. Um, mixes all the milk from the different farms, uh, pasteurizes it and sends it down to the city for sale. So that was the big market for Dutchess counties, sending things down to the ever-growing New York City. This is the residence of the late General Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, there's a lot of debate about this house, of where it was exactly, and if he actually even stayed there. At the time, in 1841 to 1845, he was actually stationed over in West Point. Uh, so this might have been a place where he visited, maybe he vacationed here, uh, you know, had a respite from uh, West Point, maybe brought his family up. So there's a lot of different uh, theories about what this house was and if he actually stayed here. But this isn't the only postcard I've found with this description. There's a few different views of this building. So uh, it was well known in the turn of the century that Grant stayed here. I don't believe this house still stands. Here's a view of Main Street looking north. You can see the church that still stands in uh, um, Salt Point today. Very wide area for the street. You can see the sidewalk over here. That's really what saved uh, Salt Point from um, you know, being torn down was there was so much room for the street to grow that uh, it wasn't just showing up in everybody's front yard. Um, so it was widened and still has a lot of its true character today. This is a road, the road looking east. So remember when I was showing you the post office, the post office would be right up here on the top of the hill on the left. This is the mill that was in between uh, the two branches of the Little Wappingers Creek. See the bridge here, little area, and then another bridge. So this mill was built right on that little island. And this would later become part of what is now Luke Williams Lumber. This is one of his first early mills, uh, sawmill on, uh, in Dutchess County. Again, the cars, most likely the photographers, just jumped out to take this quick pick. Here's Main Street uh, looking south at so uh, in Salt Point. See another very wide road, a beautiful sidewalk here, tree lined, um, just a very beautiful little hamlet. Very quiet though, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people walking around, but uh, who knows what the weather is like, it might be winter. So one of the reasons why I wanted to include this, this house still stands today. Let's just take a look at these pine trees right here. And they actually still stand, this one of the pine trees. You see, it's a giant tree today. It's also something interesting to find in these old postcards is uh, seeing a small sapling and then looking at it today and it's now a giant tree, really shows the passage of time. And I talked a lot about a lot of hamlets, but these are all the hamlets that I uh, am missing. So places like Little Rest and Onion Town and Fairview, Spack and Kill, all of these hamlets, there's still a lot to look through, but I was able to cross one off, Milan, since I found that one view of the church. So every single time I find a new postcard, you know, I have to find out where it is and uh, maybe it's a new hamlet that I didn't know about before. So I'm gonna leave you with this. Again, the CNE Depot, this is in Mount Ross. Um, thank you for listening to me and uh, I hope you learned something and got a, found a new appreciation for Dutchess County and uh, all the little tiny crossroads and hamlets that uh, some still stand and some that don't. So thank you very much.